Okay, a very good morning to everybody to my session. The future of hydrogen logistics is solid. The world is changing around us. The climate crisis is a bad situation getting worse. Despite the COVID-19 shutdown on economy, reduced fuel usage and reduced emission, the effect of climate change seems to be accelerating. The world is experimenting and extreme weather, record temperature, frequent forest fire, and flooding. The time is limited. The resources are limited. The remaining carbon headroom is limited. We need a solution to rapidly decarbonize globally in the shortest possible time and solution that can work and must navigate with all these limitations. Hydrogen is an attractive carrier, energy dense and burn clean, but it does come with logistic difficulties. There is absolutely nothing wrong with hydrogen itself. What is wrong is the way we deal with the storage and the logistic. Conventional hydrogen logistics go against the grain of physics and science in attempt to subdue the nature of hydrogen gas by installing lots of infrastructure at high cost at every segment of the supply chain. The difficulties in the storage and supply of hydrogen gas, liquid or compressed, amplify exponentially as the distance gets longer, the usage of hydrogen per user gets smaller, the user disperse, usage is intermittent and longer period of storage of hydrogen as required. We are often led to focus on what is obvious, how much it costs to produce hydrogen gas. The carbon narrative on cost of hydrogen gas production missed the point by a mile. What ultimately counts is the total cost of use for the hydrogen gas to the end user. And that must include production cost of hydrogen itself, packaging, transportation, storage at various locations, safety, and the last mile cost of fixed infrastructure required at every segment of the supply chain. We consider this in context of the limitation we are facing due to climate change, time, resources, and headroom for GHG emission. Then it will be clear that conventional gas logistics cannot get the job done. First, time is limited. There is not enough time to build all the expensive infrastructure over. Resources are limited. We don't have enough resources to build the infrastructure worldwide, certainly not within the time that we have. Remaining carbon headroom is limited. We cannot afford the carbon footprint of huge upfront infrastructure for the next five to 10 years, which promise decarbonization much later. It will be too little, too late. The key to solid hydrogen is that it bypasses the need to fight the physics of hydrogen gas. Hydrogen is produced at large scale and immediately packaged at the point of production into solid compound, which is energy dense, non flammable, and can be transported and stored at ambient temperature without pressure. Hydrogen gas is released at the user location on demand by hydrolysis process. Solid hydrogen logistics eliminates the huge upfront infrastructure, the entrance fee, the chicken and an egg that is required by hydrogen gas. Once production cost of the solid material is addressed, we will have a long a logistic ecosystem that can bring clear hydrogen across the entire planet to 
substitute fossil fuel. What we have done is bring about a major breakthrough in the rapid and efficient release of hydrogen gas from solid, which in turn enable the delivery of hydrogen gas on demand. Currently, we release about 120 kg of hydrogen gas per entry as compared to 42 kg of compressed hydrogen gas at 700 bar or 72 kg of hydrogen gas for liquid hydrogen. The process to release hydrogen gas is electrolysis, an exothermic chemical reaction that does not require energy input. The user equipment is highly scalable, safe and modular. Makes it easy to scale and to be used right across the planet and making the entire chain infrastructure like. Hydrogen can now be distributed similar to how we distribute fossil fuel. Solid hydrogen logistic is an idea where time has come. This is not the case in the past. For the longest time, it has been a bridge too far. As recent as 2007, USDO had a no-go on NABH form, which is solid chemical, uh, which is chemical. But the rationale given, although valid in 2007, is no longer applied given what has changed in the last decade due to technology innovation. So what has really changed? The cost of renewable energy has fallen by 80 to 90% in the last decade. Fuel cell and much more smaller, more efficient, and the price has fallen over 60% in the last decade. Electrolyzer, large scale storage, have become large, more efficient, and can be used anywhere. Climate crisis is clearly recognized as a present and danger. Now, as opposed to something that was my grand ch grandchildren needs to be dealt with, and hydrogen gas can be released efficiently from solid material, which makes delivery of hydrogen gas a reality. Based on White's, White's law, cost of unit manufacturing will decrease proportionally as a function of cumulative production. Currently, NABH4, which is a solid material, is being marketed and used as specialty chemical, rather high price, in an oligopolistic market. Total global, global annual production is right now at 100,000 metric ton. In the, world of, in the world of global energy, this is absolutely minuscule. Energy is the largest single cost in manufacturing of solid hydrogen and renewable production costs, wind, solar, hydro, have fallen sharply over time. We now can produce solid hydrogen at relatively low cost. We anticipate with the exponential increase in production volume of solid hydrogen, the cost of production will be drastically reduced in the short time. The principal raw materials for production of solid hydrogen is salt, sodium chloride, water, boron, and energy with none of the raw material are particularly rare or costly. Energy is the largest single cost component and renewable prices have fallen sharply. 10 years ago, no one would have even dreamed of such low solar PV price. Right now at US $1, uh, um, 13.32 cents, 1.32 cents per kilowatt hour. We are already here. This means there is absolutely no reason to believe that Wright's law 
would not fully apply here in production of so, uh, solid hydrogen. The right will hold through for all types of manufacturing, including semiconductor, solar, PV, wind, turbine, lithium battery. All these cases are real. If the best yield renewable location can be used to produce energy at unprecedented scale, for example, 10 to 50 gigawatts or more, dedicated to solid hydrogen production, hence no transmission is required. Then reaching a price that can be scaled globally is just a matter of time. on attention of hydrogen applications. There are various valuable, viable commercial applications for hydrogen based on volume, usage, and price point. Logically, we anticipate to begin with the application which mission critical and clean is value and hydrogen consumption is low. Our vision is to turn desert and wind swept wasteland in the world into giant green oil field that can power our future. There are several key considerations for hydrogen that goes beyond solid, which is beyond economics. I touch on them briefly. Unlocking the land use to generate sufficient renewable energy that the world needs Lots of land is required because transmission is no longer needed. A lot of the land which has high renewable potential can now be used. Timing. Solid hydrogen focus on making much cleaner energy from this time. All available resources is focused on green energy production and packaging into solid hydrogen. This is opposed to conventional hydrogen which needs lots of infrastructure installed before it can bring about decarbonization. Safety. Removing the need of bulk storage of high pressure hydrogen gas will make the entire hydrogen system much safer. It also means that the logistic ecosystem can, save, can scale faster to achieve its mission. Global collaboration. If countries can see tangible benefits in pooling resources to generate the cheapest possible clean energy on the shared basis, this is a good place to kickstart some global cooperation. The future of hydrogen logistics is solid. Let us not liquefy the wonderful potential of hydrogen by holding on to conventional logistic methods, which are fundamentally inadequate. Solid hydrogen logistics is an idea whose time has come. We need to embrace it on the larger scale possible to realize its potency as we unlock the full potential of renewable energy today. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank to thanks all my colleagues who work on this subject and the scientists from various R&D facilities, University of Malaya, Imperial College, UCL, ITT, and all over the world from US, China, Europe, and India. My special thanks to the late Dr. Steven Amendala, the founder of Los, Los Alamos Hydrogen Plant, who had just lost his fight to cancel in July 2003. 2002 with all. Thank you very much.